Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to smoothly rotate the gun your player is holding as your player looks around. So what we need to do first is we need to go into our player scene and what I recommend you do is that you add a gun as a child of your player's head. So what we need to do is we need to scale the gun how we would like it and position it how we would like it. So do take into account the scale of your gun since, you know, this will of course be important for how we do want our gun to look when it is, you know, attached to our player. And so what we're going to do now is uh, once you've got your gun positioned and scaled how you would like it, uh, what we need to do now is we now need to right click onto our gun and we need to now add a child node to it. And this node will just simply be a node 3D, so make sure you search up node 3D and select node 3D. And boom, so what I'm going to call this is I'm going to call this node gun underscore pause. Pause is short for position. And so what I'm going to do now is uh, this node will no longer be a child of the gun, so I'm just going to move it from out underneath the gun. And boom. So what we can do now is we will no longer be needing the gun as a child of the player, so you can just simply delete the gun now. Just go delete node and yes, there we go. So now that we have our gun pause node in our player scene, what this will be for is this will be for our gun's position, since uh, in order for our gun to smoothly rotate as our player looks around, we cannot have our gun be a child of the player, it must be separate from the player, which is why we now have the gun position, so then we can actually position the gun where we want it to on the player. So yeah. So what we're going to do now is uh, we need to go to our gun scene, so make sure that you do have your own scene for your gun, and make sure that you select your gun's parent node, and then in the inspector menu to the right, you want to click on uh, where it says script empty, so then we can create a new script. And with your script, you can call it what you want to, but I do recommend that you do save it into a scripts folder, just so then you, uh, you know, you're keeping your project neat and tidy. So I'm just going to call this gun script something like um, just gun underscore pause. And so that's going to be my script name. It's going to be saved into my scripts folder. And now when you've got your uh, your path all done, we can just go create, and boom, so now we have a new script. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some coding. So first up, what we need to do for this script is we need to get rid of the ready function since we won't be needing that at all, and boom. So now we're just going to be needing the process function. So in case you don't know what the process function is, this is a function which is called every frame. So basically code just happens here every single frame. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get rid of where it says pass and we're going to write the following. So first up we're going to write global underscore position dot x equals and so what we need to do is we need to actually get our player so we need to go get underscore tree dot current underscore scene dot get underscore node and we need to get our player so for my scene here, so the scene we're going to be using when we're testing this out is the level scene. And so as you can see, my player is a direct child of the level scene, and it is just called player with a capital P. So basically, whatever your current scene is, right, so whatever your current scene is, so my current scene will be the level scene. So what we need to do is we need to now get the node we need to now get a node from the current scene, and that node is going to be the player. So you just want to enter in the name of your player node. And then what we need to do afterwards is we need to now go slash, and then for me it will be head, and then gun underscore pause. So if we go to our player scene, as you can see here, we have our player head, which is how our player camera rotates, and then we have the gun position, which is a child of the head. So what we're doing here is we are getting the path to our gun position, and that's what our gun's global position will equal to. So basically um, we're doing global position dot x equals to get underscore tree dot current scene, so the current scene will be the level scene that I just showed before, and then we're getting a node from that scene, and the node we're getting is the player, and then we're going to be uh, accessing the player's head, 
and then the specific node that we want from the player head is the gun position node. And then what we need to do here is we need to then go dot global underscore position dot x and boom. So we need to now just copy this code here and then just paste it underneath and then we'll do instead of global underscore position dot x it'll be global underscore position dot z and then you just want to change this from x to z as well and boom. So now for the y position it is going to be different so you might be thinking to yourself why don't we just set the whole global position why do we need to do it individually with the x y and z why can't we just do it all together and the reason as to why is because of what I'm about to do here. So basically, when, in my FPS game I'm currently making at the moment, right, how I have it is so when the player jumps up and down, the gun smoothly moves up and down with it as well. So if you want that sort of effect, that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do here right now. So what we need to do is global underscore position dot y equals, and then we need to do the following, we need to do lerp. So what lerp is used for is this is a method that is used to smoothly move things into place. So what we need to do is we need to lerp our global underscore position dot y. So we need to lerp the position of our gun. And then you want to do comma. And then where we want to lerp it to is the uh, global underscore position dot y of our gun pose. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this bit of code here this get underscore tree dot current scene bit of code here, we're going to copy this and then we're going to paste it after the comma here in the lerp line. And then where it says global underscore position dot z, you want to change the z to y and then you want to do another comma afterwards and then we need to enter in a weight. So what the weight is, is this is basically like how fast you want the object to move into position. So what I usually recommend for something like this, at least from my own experience, is something like 40 to 50. So you might do something like 50 times delta. And the reason as to why we do times delta is this because it's because delta pretty much just keeps the speed the same no matter what the frame rate is. So yeah, that's why it's good to use delta. So now we have actually uh, added in the position code for our gun. So now our gun will be in the same position as our player. And not only that, but now the Y position will smoothly move up and down as well. So as our player moves up and down, the Y position will be much smoother as we jump up and down too. I will show you guys the effect of that soon, of course. So now we need to do the rotation for our gun. So what we need to do here is we'll just uh, go down a line or two. You don't have to go down two lines, I'm just doing it to separate the position and rotation stuff. But I'm going to be going down two lines. So what we need to do is we need to do rotation.x equals, and then we're going to do lerp underscore angle. So lerp angle is more so used for rotation. Uh, you can use lerp, the regular lerp, for rotation as well. However, it's not the best to use since there are a few quirks with it. However, lerp angle is much more better to use when it comes to lerping and uh, smoothly doing rotation for objects, so yeah. So we're going to use lerp underscore angle, and what we're going to do here is we're going to do global... Wait, no, we don't do global, we just do rotation.x, and then we're going to do comma. And then, of course, we want to copy this bit of code here, so just this line right here, just copy this, paste it in here. And then after gun underscore pos, we want to do global underscore rotation dot x. So we want to get the global rotation of the gun position. And then we want to do a weight for this as well. And for something like this, I recommend 15. That's usually what I use. And then we'll do times delta again. So then the speed is, at, is the same no matter what the frame rate is. And then we're going to copy this. And then we're going to paste it two times underneath for the Z and Y rotation as well. There we go. And then we're just going to change these uh, values to Z and Y. Just like this. And boom. So now that should pretty much be the code done. I think that should be pretty much the code done from memory. So yeah, so that should pretty be pretty much it. So what we're going to do now 
is we're going to go to our level scene and we're going to add our gun into our scene. So make sure you have your parent node selected of your scene and then select on this icon here to instantiate a child scene. So we're going to click on this and then just search up gun or whatever your gun's name is and then add in your gun and boom. So with your gun, uh, all we need to do now is we just need to scale it. So remember how I said earlier to take the scale of your gun into account when it was a child of your player and when you were previewing how you wanted your gun to look? Now we need to scale our gun the exact same way we did when it was a child of our player. So for me, the gun was scaled at 0.54 on both the X, Y, and Z axis. So I'm just going to write 0.54 and boom, that is now how my gun is going to be scaled. So once that is all done, we can now go play and test it out. And boom, it works. So as you can see, my gun is now smoothly rotating with the player as I look around. So no longer is it just still in place, it now rotates properly with the player. Now, if you want to uh, change the values of your, um, of your weights from 15 to something higher or lower when it comes to lerping the rotation of your, of your gun, you know, that's totally fine. You can change the values however you want to, just change it to whatever's suited for your game. So yeah, so just play around with all the values and see what works best for you. But as you can see here, when I jump up and down, uh, the gun it goes up and down smoothly as well. It is a bit jittery, but of course you can play around with the certain values and stuff like that. So yeah. Hey everyone, I'm going to from the future here. So one thing that I noticed when testing out the gun just before is uh, there is a bit of jittering that happens when the player moves up and down, as you can see. Because what we're doing is we're lerping the gun's rotation, so then it smoothly rotates uh, depending on how the player is looking. And then... Obviously, when the player jumps up and down, the gun's Y position lerps with it. Because obviously we want to have that effect where the gun is, you know, smoothly moving up and down when the player jumps. Now, as you can see, or if you can see, because I don't know if it's showing up on the video, it should be though. But as you can see, uh, it's kind of jittery. And there is a way to fix this, of course, which I am going to show you guys quickly. So let's get to it. So overall, it is a very simple fix. We just want to create a new function called physics process. Now, the physics process function is usually, you know, it's pretty much the exact same as the process function, except it's more used for physics. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to copy this code here. So see our global underscore position dot Y code. We want to drag all the way, grab it all, and then just remove it. So you want to press control C, remove it, and then press control V to paste it. And so what we want to do is we want to remove delta. So you want to remove where we multiply by delta. And then uh, depending on what your weight equals to. So if your weight is something like 40, I suggest changing it to something like 0 0.4 or 0 0.5, something like that. So uh, I think like the max would be 1. So if we just set it to something like 1, it would always, you know, be at the exact Y position of our, uh, of our camera position, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do 0 0.5 as an example. All right, let's save and then let's test again. And now when I move up and down, as you can see, there is no more jittering. So yeah, so overall now it is really, really smooth. We've got completely smooth rotation and we've also got, you know, a smooth jumping up and down as well. So now when our player jumps up and down, the gun smoothly goes up and down too. And then we also have our smooth rotation. So overall, I am very proud of what we did for this, and yeah. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what we were able to achieve here today. Thank you all again for watching, and also uh, be sure to go check out the early demonstration footage that I uh, uploaded for my FPS game that I'm making. The method that I'm showing you guys here today, when it comes to the smooth rotation and movement of the player gun, uh, that, that the method that I'm using today is actually pretty much almost identical to the method that I made for that FPS game. So be sure to go check out that footage if you would like to. 
And yeah, so without further ado, that's the end of this tutorial. See you all soon, and bye-bye.